The founding master said, "The practice of past religions has emphasized only the training of rest, saying that if we work, we cannot practice, and if we practice, we cannot work." Some people have even left their parents, wives, and children, and spent their whole lives deep in the mountains. Others have lived only to read, unaware of the rain washing away their grain. How can this be called a well-rounded practice? We do not look at practice and work as two different things. If one practices well, work goes well, and if one works well, practice goes well. So exert yourself in this great practice that constantly flows through both action and rest. Dear friends. How do you like your work? Some of you work full time, and some work part time, and some of you go to workplace every day, and some go to offices, some go to fields or factories, and some work at home. Do you like where you work and what you are doing? I. Enjoy what I'm doing here at the temple. Temple visitors often ask me, "What do you do here?" I meditate. My knees often hurt, but I enjoy sitting still. What do you do here? I study and contemplate Dharma books. My brain can hurt. When I work with the complicated translations, but I love contemplating Dharma. What do you do here? I teach. Organizing classes and preparing for services involves many details, but I really enjoy leading retreats, classes, and Dharma services. What do you do here? I work in the garden. I pull weeds, plant trees, move rocks and dirt. My back often hurts, but I love gardening. What I appreciate about my path is that I don't look at practice and work as two different things. What about you? When you hear the word meditation. What image comes to your mind? A person with a straight back, sitting with a perfect posture. A person breathing deeply in stillness and peace. There is nothing necessarily wrong with these images, but they reflect only a small sliver of what meditation means in one Buddhism. If these images of a peaceful sitting and breathing are only a tiny part of a meditation, what about the rest? One day, a group of curious people visited the founding master. They bowed and asked, "Where is your esteemed Buddha enshrined?" The founding master said, "Our Buddha has just gone out." So, if you'd like to see him, please wait. Not understanding what he meant, the group was puzzled. A little later, when it was lunch time, workers returned from the fields carrying their farm tools. The founding master pointed to them and said, "There are the Buddhas of our house." The group was even more puzzled. In this story, the visiting group was expecting to see a sitting Buddha on the altar, but Sotesan honored the working Buddhas returning from the fields. 
One of the principal teachings in Wan Buddhism is that we practice meditation both on and off the mat. Most of us are familiar with the sitting meditation on the mat. Every Sunday we practice sitting together in meditation as a virtual community. And each week we listen to guidance about how to practice sitting meditation. But what do we know about meditation off the mat? mindfulness in simple everyday activities, mindful choice in action. Sute san noted that in the past, some people believed that if they worked, they could not practice, and if they practiced, they could not work. Reflecting on this, he said, how can this be called a well-rounded practice? With this innovative perspective, Sote San brought enlightenment to the world of everyday life. His vision of delivering all sentient beings included both sitting Buddhas on the mat and working Buddhas off the mat. So, Rebecca, Please don't be too disappointed if you didn't get a spot for a week-long retreat at Southern Dharma. There is no duality between meditation on and off the mat. There is no duality between resting the mind in formal meditation and focusing the mind through the meditation of daily activities. No matter whether we are sitting in a chair or on a mat, lying down, washing dishes, tending to children, pulling weeds, designing spreadsheets, or serving coffee, we can settle the mind and cultivate equanimity. This is meditation. Timeless sun, placeless sun, Timeless Zen, placeless Zen. When work and practice are not two, joy arises because we are present with all that is. When I'm practicing like this, when work and practice are not two, whether on the mat, in the kitchen, responding to emails, or struggling to find just the right words for a Dharma talk, time seems to stop. I simply enjoy every moment. This does not mean that I don't get tired or that my back or head never aches, but usually I do not hold the discrimination between work and practice. When I am seeing that my work and practice are two separate things, I may see myself as a kyomunim who works a lot but does not practice enough. Then I feel more tired, huffing and puffing, harboring the concept of egoistic self, grumbling, oh gosh, I have to do everything around here. Over the years, I have observed some of the challenges people create for themselves when they separate their spiritual practice from activities of daily life. When we feel that because of my work and responsibility, we cannot practice enough, we can become resentful of our family or our work because we view them as impediments to the serenity of a spiritual life. When we separate our daily life from practice, we end up separating ourselves from our true nature. On the other hand, when we work without separating from our true nature, a sense of gratitude arises. How grateful for this opportunity 
to work in a practice and to practice in a work. When we work without separating from our true nature, joy naturally arises. Have you ever found yourself whistling while you work? I often hear Patty whistling when she's working around the temple. Personally, I can't whistle, but I often find myself singing or humming. In closing, here is a koan. A person who practices well is not separate from their true nature. What does this mean? A person who works well is not separate from their true nature. What does this mean? May your practice and your work be a joyful one.